One of the features that Pronest LT has is a part editor which can be used to edit parts after they've been added to the part list. This area of Pronest LT is called Advanced Edit. With Advanced Edit you can examine part geometry in detail and then do things like change the part scale, move leads, edit the cut sequence of the part, add tabs, uh, delete profiles, and a lot more. So this video will cover some of the things that you can do in Advanced Edit. Alright, so you can bring any part in the part list into Advanced Edit just by simply right clicking, selecting Advanced Edit. You can also bring parts into Advanced Edit from the Edit Part List as well. First let's talk about examining part geometry. So a part consists of one or more profiles. A profile is generally classified as either an exterior profile or an interior profile. All right, so this part has one exterior profile and four interior profiles. In some cases, parts contain a third type of profile called an open profile. We've already talked about this earlier in the video series. All right, so each profile has a start point. So on the view menu in Advanced Edit, you can view the start point by selecting start points. And now there are small boxes drawn at the start point of each of these profiles. Okay, so this is the start point for this exterior profile here. And if the profile has leads, the start point is the point where the lead in ends and the actual profile begins. So leads are always applied at the start point. All right, so each of these profiles in the part can be broken down into component, linear, or arc motions. These motions are called entities. So the number of entities in a part depends on the complexity of that part's geometry. Uh, for instance, with a circular profile, such as these interiors, if I select this, I'm now selecting that entity, and that profile only contains a single circular entity. Other more complex profiles consist of many entities. So if you have a spline, for instance, um, that would consist of a lot of entities. This exterior profile consists of both lines and arcs. So if I select this entity here, that's one linear entity in the exterior profile of this part. And as that's selected in Advanced Edit, this tells me several things. So I get the length of that entity, uh, the start and end point. But this is also telling me that the entity is a line. So this will probably be output as a G01 command in the NC code. If I select one of these arc entities here, okay, Advanced Edit is telling me this is a clockwise arc, so this might be a G02 in output. And then it gives some information like the length and radius of the arc as well. All right, if you ever want to see the limits of entities on a part, on the view menu, select intersection points. And these denote the limits of every entity in this part now. Okay, and these are also selectable. So you can select an intersection point. Um, you can also apply loops at intersection points of a part. We'll talk about that a little bit later. All right, so if you want to select an entire profile in Advanced Edit, first click this button here called Select Profiles. All right, and now when I click, it's going to select the entire profile. So in this case, I've selected the entire exterior profile. There are some properties that you can change here for this profile. Um, if you have more than one cut process, you can select that here. So if I were to have oxy fuel available, for instance, and I want to cut the exterior with oxy fuel, you can change that here. You can also change the kerf direction. So you can select from left, right, or off. And then you can change the cut direction as well. So I could change this from clockwise to counterclockwise if I wanted to. All right, so that covers the basics of inspecting a part in Advanced Edit. Let's take a look at some of the features that Advanced Edit has. So you can create single part output from Advanced Edit. This will create an NC file with instructions to cut that single part. So on the file menu, just select output part. Uh, prior to creating single part output, you can move the part home if you need to. So there's these options here. 
You can move the part home just by clicking an area around the part. Okay, or you can move it to one of these choices. All right, and the part home is the init point or the zero, zero point that you would need to home the torch to prior to cutting. And this is used primarily for single part output. There's also a feature where you can export directly to DXF. So that's available right here on the file menu. Measure mode, this gives you a way of measuring distances on the part. So just click and drag and then the distance will show up in the status bar at the bottom. It also gives you DX and DY values. Okay, you can also resequence the interiors in the part. So click Cut Sequence. And here the interiors of the part are sequenced and I can clear this out and then just click on the profiles in the order that I want them cut. Okay, and the exterior would obviously be cut last. All right, if you want to view the cut sequence, that's available here on the View menu. There's a cut simulation mode. Um, you can see how the cut sequence will be performed. This also includes the rapid motions as well, and it mimics the exact motions that will be included in output code. So just click Cut Simulation. Okay, there's a play button here. All right, you can see that the simulation just takes you through the exact motions that will be included in the NC file. All right, there's a slider here where you can control the speed. Then you can just click any of these to go back to that point in the sequence. There's an option for scaling. Um, if you want to resize the part, just click the scale button, uh, drag a measurement line, and then you can scale the entire drawing by a percentage or change the DX and DY values. Some setups give you the option for adding scribe text. So if your machine is capable of doing marking or it has a dedicated etching or scribing tool, you can add scribe text. Uh, I'm working with a very basic machine and it doesn't have that capability, but you would just add that using this scribe text button here. You can also move leads in advanced edit. So just click the modify leads button then pick the point on the profile where you want to move leads to. This will move the start point and the leads to that spot. All right, you can also just edit leads at any time by clicking and then changing the values in the properties area. So I can change the size here, click apply, and it will keep my changes. Okay, if you ever get stuck here in advanced edit, just like any other area in Pronest, um, the F1 key will bring up the help and the topic just contains a description of the different properties in the area you are. You can also add tabs from advanced edit. So you can click add tabs and then just click to apply the tabs on the profile. Another thing people sometimes like to do is add loops at the corners. This is used if you want to get a really sharp edge or a sharp corner. So just click loop. You can add this at any intersection point. You would add that there. You can adjust the style if you need to here and the size as well. All right, once you're done making changes in advanced edit, you'll want to save your changes. So you can do that from the file menu and clicking save changes. Or if you click return to nesting, you'll be prompted to save your changes in advance edit. All right, and now if I were to nest this part here, all the changes I've made in advance edit, the tabs and moving leads and so on, are saved here. One additional feature that might be useful in advance edit is for cutting interior profiles only. So you might have a part where you only need to cut the interiors on the part. Um, maybe it's a prefabricated piece that only needs holes cut out of it. Or maybe you have like I-beams where you only need to cut out the holes or slots. In this case, you can use advanced edit for that. I'll run through that very quickly now. So let's get rid of this part and go back to the edit part list. 
Okay, so let's take this bolt hole rectangle here. Let's say that I have a piece of scrap that already matches this size. So I have scrap that's 5 by 20, and I only need the holes cut out of it. So in this case, I just want to make sure that the part is drawn in CAD so that it has an exterior profile and that it matches the size of your workpiece. So mine is 5 by 20 here. Let's add that. And so now Pronest has brought that in as it normally would. We can bring this part right into Advanced Edit. Now that the part's loaded in Advanced Edit, we'll need to set a good reference point on the workpiece so that you can home the torch to that position. So you need to pick something that makes sense for the part you're using. For this rectangular part, I might want the home point right on the corner so that I can home the torch to that position. So right now I'm going to select um, Recalculate Part Home and I'll home this one to the upper right. Okay, That's going to put it right on the corner of the part there. Okay, and now I can just delete the profiles that I don't want. So I'll go into Profile Select Mode, select the exterior profile, and delete it. Alright, the home point is in the same position. My interiors are still there. Now I would just go to File and Output Part. Okay, and only the motions I need for the interiors will be included in this output file. And it would start right at the home point. Alright, so that's just a little tip for that kind of a situation.